So I'm going to talk a little bit about cadence. Now, I know what you're thinking. That's a thing that comes at the end of a Bach chorale, or maybe at the end of my Ritonello in my Vivaldi concerto that I'm playing, or my Vivaldi sonata. Um, it plays a key part, though, in recitative. Um, and it's a really useful way to think about how cadence works and the kinds of cadence. Um, and I was talking in the last video about figures, about this kind of bag of tricks that composers and performers had to, to um, affect the emotions of the listener. Now, um, if you ask a rhetorical question, um, you all know what that is. It's where you say, what do you think you're doing? And it's a question mark at the end, but I'm not really expecting you to say, ah, oh, well, what I'm doing is, it's more of a kind of, what do you think you're doing? Now, that kind of rhetorical question you find very often in Handel operas in recitatives. Almost always, it will be accompanied by this cadence. In other words, it's finishing on the dominant, but this is our tonic. Now I'm in E minor, I'm finishing on five. And before it is chord two. Sorry, four is chord four B. Um, so it's a kind of a half close, um, but it gives you that sense of um, of incomplete. It's an incomplete kind of cadence, if you like. Bach the same. More than half of the times that he uses any kind of question mark in the cantatas and passions, um, it will have this. 4-5 uh, Phrygian cadence. It's the same chords as the middle movement of Brandenburg 3 as well, which is only those two chords. So it has a particular meaning to it. Now, um, the main kind of cadence, of course, though, is to carry on and go 5-1 um, if, if we're in E minor. Let's, let's make it easier for me and go back to C major. So here I am, that's my 5-1 or my 5-7. Now, these kind of punctuation points will, um, will guide you through the structure of a piece of music. Maybe it's a prelude that you're learning, like, say, the E major prelude for violin. You'll see these cadence points there, being able to recognize them and shape them and choose which of those two notes you want to be louder than the other um, in order to go with the words is a really, really important Point. Now, I said go with the words. Of course, there aren't any words, are there, in that, in that E major prelude. But if you take Bach's chorales and you listen to the way he harmonizes the words, nearly always in the German, remember you get the verb at the very end. You, the verb at the very end, get um, in German word order. Now, that means that nearly always the chord before the dominant in Bach's chorales will be the one that gives you the root of the verb. All of the rest of it is simply saying how many people did it when, which we already know. It's just grammatical endings. Um, so for me, when I'm shaping my phrases and I'm looking for how, how my, my recognition of cadences during phrases and, and across the whole sort of paragraph of a piece of music, um, that will help me shape where I'm going to. Um, because we want to go to the phrase ending. We don't want to go to the phrase ending, if you like. So it's the idea that um, in 20th century performance that, that we're, we're not just playing a series of blobs. We're trying to sort of draw the energy of the listener with us um, across this arc, this narrative arc. Telos is the lovely Greek word that means goal, the kind of goal orientation of your phrase, which is the thing that gives you this energy that carries you through the story. Um, but of course, it doesn't necessarily carry you through to the last note. Um, in Baroque music and certainly classical music, it's absolutely key, I would say, to see how the cadences fit during across the sort of fabric of your piece. The next thing that flows from that idea of the three chords of the cadence, um, there I'm doing four, five, one. Um, the next thing that flows from that is the idea of sequence. Now, if you can spot, particularly in composers like Vivaldi, if you can spot any kind of sequential movement, then you can begin to shape it. You can, you can look for the, um, the ebb and flow of the music. And my favorite metaphor 
at the moment is uh, last year I was walking in the park and I, and I walked past a skate park and it's full of poured concrete, beautiful kind of shapes and uh, it's got a kind of, um, like a sort of architecture of its own based on momentum, speed, dynamic movement of the skater. But I imagine just getting a cricket ball and throwing it as hard as I could into the skate park and then just watching its journey. It would go like up the edges and then it, was, it would be slowing down and speeding up again, gathering momentum, changing direction, doing a kind of journey all on its own, rather like Newton was saying the planets were doing or a comet would be influenced by the flow of energy of the flow of a body in, in space, it would kind of be pulled around by its gravity and then sent off in a different direction. So this idea of circular movement, of, of momentum in a sequence, um, is nice because I can... I can kind of get off that elevator wherever I like. Um, I can go round that that sequence of fifths so I can now I don't even know where I am on my cello anymore I think I'm in G flat yeah um, um, at 415 a415 so it's the idea of circular energy momentum um, particularly this idea of a uh, slingshot that's really, really nice that you think of, um, for instance, in um, Mahler's first symphony. Mahler one, Mahler one, Mahler one, two, three, four, five. It's that idea that, that you have a simple idea that you repeat. You repeat it again, like David and Goliath, you know, David's slingshot goes once around his head, one again around his head, and then on the third one, he releases the stone. And that, the stone then has the energy, it has the talos to carry us across the phrase. Now, in a way, this is, this is pertinent to any tonal music that we're talking about, right up to, to Mahler 1. But it's something that you see all the time in classical music and in Baroque music, um, that you see groups of notes that kind of have this, um, this rotating energy where the third thing um, leads to talos. Um, and sequential movement, cadences, sequences that come from cadences, um, that gives you everything you need. <laughs> 